Today, the Bakersfield Police Department is mourning the loss of one of its own following an early morning crash in East Bakersfield. The Bakersfield Police Department has identified the officer as 26 year old David Nelson. This picture taken from Nelson's Facebook page. The coroner report says he died from blunt force injuries. BPD says he's been on the force for the past two years. Nelson is from the Burbank area and was not married. As you can imagine, a very difficult day for the Bakersfield Police Department, who has not lost one. Of its officers in the line of duty in 32 years. Starting right now, a vigil is going on downtown at the Bakersfield Police Department to honor Officer David Nelson. 23 ABC's Tim Callahan joins us live at the vigil with the latest. Tim? Yeah, Lauren, a very somber mood here. Folks have been gathering uh, both behind us and at the steps of the Bakersfield Police Department as the bells at the First Presbyterian Church sound behind us. A growing memorial here for people who are just coming from all around Bakersfield after they got word really on social media today. Uh, that a memorial, an impromptu memorial, was taking place for 26 year old David Nelson, that officer who, as we know now, passed away overnight in, an, uh, in a chase and a fiery crash. Uh, and now people mourning, as we mentioned, people coming from all around Bakersfield, a good 20 to 30 people gathered behind us, as well as if you take a look right here at the steps of the Bakersfield Police Department downtown in the shadow of the Bakersfield Police Memorial, where the names of several officers are listed. People are gathering, uh, as we mentioned, for this impromptu memorial. Uh, right now, in the center of your screen there, being interviewed by some of the media as well as our cameras is Amber Sokola. Uh, Amber Sokola is the daughter of the last known uh, police officer to be killed in the line of duty. That was William Sokola in 1983. He died in a motorcycle accident uh, while on duty for the Bakersfield Police Department. As you can imagine, uh, without a tragedy happening here so long, uh, this really does hit home for so many people in the community. Councilman Terry Maxwell uh, in the center of your screen there as we see people uh, giving hugs and condolences. Many people from Bakersfield coming downtown to uh, take part in this ceremony, in this impromptu memorial to give honor to someone who, uh, as we know and as we report on so often, goes into the line of duty every day, puts on a badge and gets in their squad car. And for the family members of folks uh, who they go out with, they do not know if they will come home. And unfortunately, uh, our city, Bakersfield, Kern County as well, feeling the loss. We have uh, sheriff's deputies from Kern County Sheriff's Department who are coming here to lend their support, uh, no doubt, and at a time when people uh, are looking for answers within the department. As you mentioned, let's talk a little bit about this officer, uh, if we can get his picture on the screen. This was a, a two-year veteran of the force. Uh, when we heard his age, just 26 years old, uh, the first thing I'm sure that went through many people's minds is just that he was that, a, uh, someone young to this force, someone willing to put his life on the line, uh, and now he has paid what we are learning is the ultimate sacrifice. So, as we mentioned, we are live in downtown Bakersfield at the steps of the Bakersfield Police Department, where no doubt upstairs and downstairs there are somber moods today from people, officers who still have to go out and do their job today, as well as the folks here who work behind the scenes. Uh, just if you go on social media today, uh, log into your Facebook pages, no doubt you will read comments from people. Uh, you see the blue lights uh, symbol for officer down, an officer killed in the line of duty that's being uh, put across so many social media pages today. And really that is the echoing sediment as, uh, again, we see more people streaming to this service. Uh, we can presume that a lot of people have uh, started gathering here from different offices. We have City Hall North across the street, as well as the county run offices, a church, First Presbyterian, just kitty corner to the Bakersfield Police Department. So a lot of people uh, coming downtown to pay their respects and to learn more about this officer just two years on the force. Uh, who was killed overnight in a crash after a high-speed pursuit northeast Bakersfield just on Panorama Drive around 2.45 this morning. Uh, we're not going to be able to bring you the audio from this uh, ceremony, just from the perch and the, the placement where we are here. Uh, but as we mentioned, we have seen some of the top brass here from the uh, police department, Lieutenant Greg Terry, uh, making his way inside just a few moments ago. Uh, not sure who was going to speak on behalf of the police department. Of course, uh, Chief Williamson, who uh, we can presume will make some sort of comment today as he is the one leading this force and he is the one uh, who has to give the bad news to family members uh, who are learning today that uh, one of their officers will not be coming home. Uh, and, and in the days coming, we're gonna, of course, hear about the uh, different prelude of events from memorials to, of course, the funeral for this officer. And you can stick with us for that coverage 
and uh, when those events will be happening around town. Already a lot of questions coming into our Facebook page and, and to, uh, to my email, just uh, what is the next steps? What happens in a situation like this? Because Bakersfield really hasn't been through something like this, as we mentioned, since 1983. The last officer killed in the line of duty, William Sokola. And as we mentioned, his daughter, Amber Sokola, is here uh, at the steps of the Bakersfield Police Department. I had a chance to speak with her just about uh, 10 or 15 minutes ago. Uh, and she was only one year old when her father uh, did not come home from duty. So she doesn't have any uh, memory or recollection of what happened that day. But obviously what she told me is she's, as she's grown up, she's learned how to live without her father. And of course, on days like today, when uh, another family is grieving, another daughter, another mother, another sister is going through what she went through, uh, those emotions are very raw and of course very real. So uh, Henry, if we can push into the center of your screen there, that is, uh, I believe, a representative from the uh, Kern County Veterans Community just a few moments ago making uh, prayers in front of the Bakersfield Police Memorial now addressing this crowd of uh, what looks to be upwards of 150 to 200 people who have gathered here uh, in downtown Bakersfield and taking part in this memorial to honor the life of the two-year veteran officer David Nelson who died last night in the line of duty uh, while responding to a high-speed chase. So as we mentioned, we are standing by here in downtown. We are going to stick with you here. Uh, I hope to talk to Amber Sokola, uh, make her way over to our post. We uh, had hoped to talk to her. We talked to her off camera just a few moments ago about what this day means to her, how real uh, these emotions are. As we mentioned, she is the daughter of the last officer killed in the line of duty in the city of Bakersfield, Bakersfield Police Department. Uh, and so getting her perspective is certainly an important one today as the grieving process for so many families and extended relatives of David Nelson, the officer killed, will begin now. So I'm going to step out of the way here as this memorial continues uh, right at the steps of the Bakersfield Police Department. As we mentioned, a lot of folks uh, coming out to this who uh, we see, I see folks uh, from Terry Maxwell, city councilman, uh, folks in the nonprofit community from the Mission at Kern County have made their way here. And unfortunately, there is not a way that we can get uh, any closer to this uh, gentleman who is speaking. But I am told he is the one who organized this uh, rally. Uh, so we will, of course, try to speak to him in just a few moments uh, after he is done addressing this crowd. And this uh, memorial, it's worth mentioning, really spread by uh, social media. A lot of people getting online. Obviously, the first uh, reaction is to, to know what can I do, where can I go? Uh, for so many people in the police department as well as in this community who uh, want to express their feelings of, of loss. So that is what we have here, a, a gathering memorial of people, uh, as we mentioned, from all walks of life in city, uh, in our community, from city government to nonprofits to just individuals, families uh, who brought their kids down here. And uh, of course, we're sure that there are relatives of the fallen officer who are uh, wanting to know what is going on, of course, with these memorials. As we mentioned, uh, just to recap the details, if you're just tuning into our special coverage here, Officer David Nelson, two years on the force, 26 years old, uh, on duty last night, as presumably he was every night in his two years on the force, responding to a high-speed chase. The details of that are not known. Uh, Bakersfield Police still looking for a vehicle that is involved in that chase, uh, but something happened where this officer lost control and crashed his vehicle. Uh, and was taken to Kern Medical Center where he was later pronounced dead. And of course, as the days and the investigation goes on into that case and what happened, we'll sure learn more details about what happened. Uh, but for today, in the city of Bakersfield, it certainly is a day where people are mourning and uh, trying to come to grips with what happened. As you mentioned, the last known officer to fall in the line of duty, 1983, two decades removed, three decades, excuse me, removed from that uh, incident. And uh, no doubt this will open a wound in the city of Bakersfield and for the police department. And for anyone who's grown up here, lived here, spent time here, uh, they know that this is a tight-knit law enforcement community. Everyone knows everyone. Uh, officers, whether you wear a corrections officer's uniform, a sheriff's uniform, Bakersfield police, park ranger, whatever law enforcement uh, field you are in, they know each other and they care for each other. We see it at uh, numerous events every year throughout the community. We see it uh, in these moments when a uh, Bakersfield police officer is killed and subsequently people from uh, all walks of law enforcement come together. And uh, we can only presume that we will see that unity and that camaraderie in uh, the next few days as the city of Bakersfield comes to terms with this loss. And we learn more about this officer who uh, 
was just beginning his career in law enforcement, just getting into this, this, uh, this field where, as we know, the dangers exist. High-speed chases happen, accidents happen. Uh, police officers go to scenes where uh, they don't know the outcome and what's going to happen. And unfortunately, as we mentioned, if uh, you're just coming to the details of this case, Bakersfield Police Officer David Nelson, 26 years old, two years on the force, uh, passed away last night while on duty. So we can, uh, we can presume that uh, in the next coming days that people uh, will organize some formal rallies and uh, will come together. This is, uh, as we mentioned, an impromptu one. Uh, Bakersfield Police now, I can see, actually uh, doing a little traffic control just for the crowd that's grown here. As we mentioned, there's a good uh, 20 uh, folks on the street here, another uh, 50 or so up uh, towards the, uh, the steps here. As someone, uh, we don't know his exact position, but he's with uh, a Kern County Veterans Organization. Uh, just moments before the crowd gathered, I noticed him praying in front of the Bakersfield Police Memorial uh, that is positioned here in uh, right at the steps of the Bakersfield Police Department. And uh, as we mentioned before, too, top brass from the Bakersfield Police Department uh, making their way inside just moments ago. I haven't seen any uh, representatives from the police department in terms of uh, lieutenants, captains, uh, the police chief come out. We can presume they are planning their own uh, formal memorial. As we have seen across the country when situations like this happen, the entire police force, the entire community uh, really comes together to, uh, to pay tribute to this uh, individual that laid their life down for the city of Bakersfield. Also worth mentioning too, I uh, just came from an interview uh, with Chad Vegas and uh, if you don't know the name and you don't recognize the name, uh, his father was the officer who lost his life before uh, William Sokola. His, uh, his dad, Patrick D. Vegas, died in a motorcycle accident uh, with a drunk driver in 1980. So we were speaking to him earlier today, getting his perspective on a day like today. He, him telling me, really, that, uh, again, as we heard from Amber Sokola, daughter of uh, William Sokola, Vegas telling me that just really does open old wounds. It, uh, he was six at the time, as we hear the crowd applaud uh, the individual who was uh, speaking just a moment ago. Uh, Chad Vegas was six years old when his dad was killed in the line of duty, and he remembers seeing his mom uh, in the living room of her house, uh, emotional as officers from the police department, Bakersfield Police Department, were consoling her with the news. Uh, and we can presume a situation like that has happened uh, today, overnight, at some home uh, in the city of Bakersfield. Uh, a family, mother and father, are being uh, consoled today as they learn that their son is not going to return home from duty on the Bakersfield Police Department. As we mentioned, uh, we are going to have live coverage, continuing coverage of this uh, tragedy that's hit Bakersfield and hit Bakersfield really hard and uh, we're going to stay down here at the Bakersfield Police Department. We are going to live stream this for you on turnto23.com as well as our mobile and tablet apps so you can stay with us there. We're going to try to get a, a closer vantage points. As we mentioned, continuing coverage today of a two-year veteran, David Nelson, who died on the line of duty, Bakersfield Police Department overnight. You can stick with us. I will see you tonight on 23 ABC News at 5 and 6 as well as 11. And we will bring you the latest developments as Bakersfield continues to mourn this loss. For now, reporting in downtown Bakersfield, Tim Callahan, 23 ABC. Lauren, I'll send it back to you in the studio. Thank you, Tim. And as you mentioned, this is just the first of many memorials that will be happening throughout the week and in those coming months. So if you're still at work right now and you can't make it to pay your respects to that memorial that's going on right now outside the Bakersfield headquarters, you can see it live streaming on our website on TurnTo23.com. We will continue our team coverage all day, so stay tuned to our website. We'll also have the latest on 23 ABC News at 5 and 6. For now, we want to send you back to that special report with President Obama delivering his eulogy to Reverend Pickney. Thank you for joining us. Perhaps this tragedy causes us to ask some tough questions.
gather here today. Shower us with your holy presence. Let us be humble, Father, by what has occurred. Let us unite with this fine department and the departments I mentioned. And let us come together as a united city of Bakersfield. Not hyphenated by anything, but merely in support of those who go out every day and protect us. Thank you, Father, for this brave individual who freely and willingly sacrificed his or her life so that we might be protected against those who may choose to do us wrong. Father, be with the family who is experiencing overwhelming grief right now. Guide them, protect them. May your holy watchtower of security and safety and love and grace be over them. Jesus, precious and almighty name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. As, uh, just, if you're joining us here on the live stream, uh, the chaplain, as we just learned a few moments ago with the Bakersfield Police Department, uh, finished addressing this crowd. What happened last night was a tragedy. What happened today is we try to pick up the pieces, try and get our lives back together, try and move on. And as we move on, we have to we have to dedicate ourselves to being the citizens that this officer is trying to protect. The ones that that are giving the ones that understand, the ones that go up to officers and say thank you so much for your service. Because this reminds us that the service sometimes doesn't end at the end of the day, it ends at the end of the life. I got up this morning, I was in Monterey at the uh, League of Cities. Beautiful community, it was a wonderful day. As we got ready to leave, I heard the news. So dedicated ourselves to being here today, my wife and my two grandchildren, because we have to come together. And you have to make sacrifices. You sometimes don't get to do the things you want to do. This officer didn't want to be chasing that man last night. But he did it because he was dedicated. The only dedication we can give to his life is to all come together and work as a community so that this doesn't happen again. That only happens through one person talking to another, telling them that what this officer did and that life in his life for us is beyond anything we can imagine that we could do for this community. There's no, there's no bigger sacrifice for our community than to lose life protecting citizens like the ones that I'm looking at today. So, when you get on your knees tonight, and you ask for a certain prayer, ask for this person's family, Officer Nelson's family, is protected, that they have an umbrella. And that umbrella is one that helps them heal, and helps us to heal. And I hope God hears those prayers. I just took a puff of them. I think the time will heal them, the community will embrace them, and we can move on to better parts of our lives.
now by, uh, for those of you on our live stream, uh, Terry Maxwell, City Councilman, you just uh, addressed the crowd emotionally, of course, as so many people in the city are. Um, tell me what you're feeling right now and what you felt when you got the news today. Uh, trying to hold back from crying, mostly. Um, this is just a tragedy. It's just a tragedy. You know, th this is just a small outpouring of what this community is going to go through. I think this community will come together. Uh, they'll embrace this. They'll realize that Life is so short. We, none of us know how long we're going to be walking this, this earth. And this officer didn't go to work yesterday thinking it was his last. But he was dedicated to his job. Just like a lot of us have different jobs and we're dedicated to those jobs and we go, we go to work and we don't think about those kind of things. This reminds us how fragile life really is. And obviously this officer just two years on the force. As you can imagine, uh, this news hits that much harder, right? Just because... He obviously wanted a full career in law enforcement, cut so short. Um, obviously, someone in your position, I, I, I'd be curious to, to know, you know, you, you turned back just a moment ago and you said to the police officers behind you how proud you are of them. Yep. And I would imagine in this situation, you're, you're, you're proud of these officers, young guys who could be your sons or your daughters. Um, and that's got to hit home to you. It is. I, I have a son who's uh, 34, another one who's 32. I have... Uh, some um, steps, stepsons, uh, and, and they're a little bit older, but yeah, they, they could very easily have been in law enforcement and, and been the person that succumbed to this awful tragedy. Um, you know, it's in the hands of God. You, you know, you raise your kids, and at some point, you have to let go. You have to let go, and, and life is going to happen for them, however, God really wants it to happen. And, and in that, you don't have the control of what's going to happen to anybody any any given day. You hope that you've raised them well and they, that they dedicate themselves to good causes. And I know that this officer was dedicated to this this police department. And it's a tragedy that he, he succumbed to something that he just didn't need to succumb to. As, as the chaplain said, why didn't the guy just pull over? What's the point? What's the point in somebody losing their life over this? So many chases and those situations happening in Bakersfield. Obviously, uh, Terry, the, the next few days, the next weeks, um, from someone who, in the city government, do we have uh, any memorials planned? Is there anything that the public can? Obviously, today was sort of an impromptu yeah, one where was. a lot of people showed up. Uh, is there anything planned that you heard within the department, within the city? As I said, I, I was in Monterey this morning at the League of Cities, so I have not heard anything. I've not been in communication with anybody, but I know that I know that there will be an outpouring. Uh, our, our next meeting is until July 22nd. I'm sure there'll be things happening before then, but at July 22nd, I'm sure that we'll dedicate uh, a portion of that meeting to this gentleman. Sen uh, City Councilman Terry Maxwell, we thank you for your time, My and we're sorry for your uh, the loss of, of the city and, and for the people that that uh, call the city home. I take it personally. 
I take it as personal. Huh? We appreciate you. Um, uh, just a moment ago, uh, we weren't able to bring the audio to you, but uh, Councilman Terry Maxwell addressing the crowd uh, who is now uh, dispersed talking to different folks here. Uh, really taking this in, uh, bringing this home, uh, as Terry Maxwell said, is this hurts the city. Uh, we heard from a very emotional uh, city councilman who is responsible uh, for these officers in terms of funding uh, and takes pride in what they do here in our community as someone who oversees downtown Bakersfield. So I'm going to slip in uh, over here. Uh, this was the chaplain gentleman who was uh, speaking just a moment ago from the Bakersfield Police Department. Uh, we're going to slide in here and see if we can uh, hear from uh, him as he addresses other media. took me under his personal wing. Bear with us here as we... You know, actually, let's uh, let's talk to Amber. Amber. Amber, can I talk to you real quick? Uh, we apologize for the impromptuness of this. This was uh, Amber Sokola, the uh, lady I wanted to speak to before we were getting going out here. Amber, thank you. Um, obviously, we were talking before uh, just about what this day means to you, really. This brings up a lot of emotions. Uh, your father was the last uh, Bakersfield police officer to be killed in the line of duty. I saw you back there uh, listening to everything that was happening. First off, what, what uh, is today, what does this feel like for you today? To me, this, this feels new because I didn't get to experience this last time. I was one. Um, so I, I was one. That's just all I was all I've known, all I've grown up with. Um, I didn't get to go to my dad's funeral. My mom being a new widow with three kids, I was the youngest and who wants a screaming baby at a funeral? Um, so I didn't get to go to that. So this is all just new emotion that I haven't experienced before and it's raw and it's really hard just going through this again. And you know, my dad's the last name on the wall and now he's not anymore. And so it's just really hard going through this and experience this all over again. Yeah, and obviously I saw you talking to uh, Kern County Sheriff's deputies, okay. uh, and that really speaks, I think, their presence here to just the, 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 the tight bond that exists in law enforcement here in Kern County. And you, I'm sure, over the years have felt that. I have. You know, I have a cousin that works for the sheriff and a friend that works for CHP. And, of course, you always give each other grief how BPD is better and sheriff is better and I, because that's what you do. You're always better. But at the end of the day, you're... You're still brothers. They're still there for each other, no matter what, through thick and thin. You're there for each other because that's what family is, whether you're blood or otherwise. And this is the family. This is a family. If the family of Officer Nelson is watching this, obviously for someone who has gone through this before, would you have any message for them, uh, either their relatives or their family, uh, as they enter this process? Yeah, you know, just I, I don't think it gets any easier. You just get used to it, and that emotion will be there, and you will just... 30 years later, you just wake up crying and you don't know why, and that's okay. You're always going to have that emotion, and there's nothing wrong with still grieving the loss of a loved one after many years, but it it gets better, and you, you figure out how to deal with it, and you'll be able to pick yourself up and move on. Amber, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, condolences today. Obviously, this is a hard day for you, and uh, we thank you for being here and giving your perspective uh, in this day. Thank you very much. Obviously, uh, as you just heard, that was Amber Sokola, her... Uh, Dad was the last officer to be killed in the line of duty. I'm joined now uh, by Chaplain. Can you pronounce your last name for me, sir? Resnick. Resnick. Thank you very much. I saw you uh, up there, and I saw you here before praying at the, the memorial here. Take me through why you wanted to be here and uh, really what this day has hit for you. Well, number one, I'd like to thank you guys for seeing my post on Facebook and for helping me spread the word to ensure that we had such a great crowd here today. What's really important to me is that other people acknowledge what I felt in my heart for this officer and for this department. And that is that we are united as the city of Bakersfield and that we do support this department in times of grief. And that's the, that's the most important point. And I hope that this message uh, reaches the officer's family. As a grief chaplain and grief counselor, it's, the, the grief that the family is going through is absolutely unthinkable and no one possibly can imagine the pain and the suffering that they're going through.
Yeah, and obviously this is your line of work. This is what you do, and this is the uh, environment in which you work at. What do you do to comfort these families? Uh, I heard a little bit about your message of just uh, prayer and uh, coming together in this community, but what would your message be to that family? Have, have you, I guess I should say, have you spoken to the family? Uh, what would your message be if you could talk to them and, and help them this time? The, the most important thing that you can say to the family in times like this is, I can't imagine the pain that you must be going through. The worst thing that anyone can ever say is, don't worry about it, you'll get over it, or this time will pass. Those kinds of things are the most hurtful words imaginable. No one can possibly imagine the grief that this family is experiencing. And, and even if we've suffered grief in our own families, this family is suffering grief in a way that none of us can imagine. We thank you for being here, and, and, and we're happy to help uh, with that Facebook post. Thank you, sir, and thank you for being here and taking the lead on this. We appreciate it. Uh, obviously, the first of what will be many memorials here in uh, Bakersfield to honor this officer. This one, of course, was an impromptu one spread, as you heard here from a chaplain by social media. People getting online this morning at 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, waking up, as you heard from Car Councilman Terry Maxwell, to hear this awful news uh, and wonder what they can do and how they can be part of this grieving process that will no doubt take a long time. And uh, we, as we mentioned, this uh, memorial is now officially over, but there is still a trickle of folks here from Councilman Terry Maxwell to several uh, Bakersfield police officers uh, who have been driving by and walking by, uh, taking part in this. And uh, a message to you at home uh, watching this, if you're at work or at home, uh, stick with 23ABC for continuing coverage of this. Uh, we will be here uh, on the front lines of what is going on from different memorials uh, to events planned around the community, from uh, the funeral to different uh, areas where the community will grieve. You can get updates on turnto23.com. If you're watching us through your mobile and tablet apps, then you know you'll get a push alert uh, when something of import happens. Uh, we will pass that along to you. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, sitting here uh, with the uh, Bakersfield Memorial Police Officers Memorial, we just heard from uh, Officer William uh, Sokola's family and uh, Amber Sokola. As you can see there, her last name, uh, Sokola, is the last name of uh, the officers killed here in the Bakersfield. And as you can see, uh, unfortunately today, the city of Bakersfield now uh, planning and thinking how they will add uh, the next name to that list. Obviously something that uh, no city wants to go through. Uh, as we mentioned, we will continue to cover this story, bringing the latest details on the investigation into what happened from memorials around the city of Bakersfield. And as we continue to grieve here in Bakersfield, we will bring you the details uh, on everything that is happening. So for now, reporting live in downtown Bakersfield, uh, we appreciate you being here with us on our live stream as well as over on our air at 23 ABC News. I will see you tonight on 23 ABC News at 5 and 6 for continuing coverage of our city in mourning as we uh, learn more about this officer killed in the line of duty. We will see you later tonight.